Hi, I'm Christian Howe. Hi, and I'm Chris Reeve. And in this how-to, we're going to look at hard lighting. There's some great ways using one or two reflectors to give your images more shape, contrast and drama. To kick off, I'm going to use one of my favourite bits of kit, which is the high performance reflector. These things chuck out loads of light exactly where you want it. They're perfect for backgrounds, for rim lighting and for the key light. Let's get going with the bare minimum. A single high performance reflector and a studio wall. You can literally shoot anywhere that you want. Firstly, let's pop this reflector onto a single head. Get your models to relax, use the wall as a prop and you can create some great shapes. Chin, okay, that's beautiful. Stand where you're going to be shooting and utilise the modelling light to shape the face and judge the length of the shadow. The further away the flash, the longer the shadow and simply adjust the power of your light until you reach approximately f11 and fire away. The beauty of digital is that you can fire off a few shots, get instant feedback either from your LCD or your monitor if you're shooting tethered. <laughs> Get your model to move around between each shot to ensure that you get the best range of workable poses. Okay, let's narrow that light source even more and change that high performance reflector for a grid and a grid diffuser. I love grids when shooting models, they really bring out a lot of shape. This time I've used the Max Light reflector with a honeycomb grid on a Gemini head. The grid will create a much narrower and more controllable light than with a high performance reflector with deeper shadows. I've added a black background here, really add more contrast, make that image really pop and stand out. If you want to use a tighter light source, simply pop in another grid. The modding light is really important here, as is control of your model. Small movements can dramatically affect the shape of the face and the metering. Again, meters around f11 and fire off a few frames and check the results. Okay, for the final setup, we've added a second light and we've really narrowed that light source down even further by adding a snoot. The snoot is basically a conical shaped attachment that creates a really narrow beam of light. So taking on board what we've covered on the previous setups, you'll really have to pay close attention to where the light is falling and how much the model moves. This time we've added a second light to act as a rim light and create a degree of separation between the model and the dark background. It's a simple case of having a max light reflector with a honeycomb grid to really control that light. Remember, the nearer the flashes and reflectors, the narrower the beam of light will be. However, be mindful of hotspots and outlighting the dynamic range of your camera. If you want to lift the shadows, you can always use reflectors and a white polyboard. Basically, we're recreating the image in the light book, but without the water this time. Just remember, there are no hard and fast rules how you light your models. Everything's experimentation, so just get in there and start shooting. There you have it, three quick and really easy setups that give you loads of drama and different effects using hard light. Thanks Christian, great shots. Now let's get a few more tips to get you started. When shooting hard light, shadows are of key importance. Long shadows on the nose, they never look flattering. Keep your model in more or less the same spot, as even small movements out of position will affect the original lighting setup. Black or white polyboards are great to reflect or absorb light. Use them to shape or lift the shadows around the face. Why not try something different? This shot utilises three tighter light sources, an overhead grid and two snoots from behind. Don't be afraid to experiment. Mistakes will only make you better. There you have it. Loads of different ideas of how to shoot with hard light. And remember to check out the Lightbook section of the Bones website and we'll see you next time on How To. Thank you.